Now, looking at that sunset, you would think there's been every chance for it to really light up these, the underside of these clouds, and that's what I've been waiting for. But it just hasn't done it. Somehow or other, there's been just enough cloud, other cloud, to get in the way. And in fact, I can see rain, rain uh, showers over there in the distance. I hope they're not going to head my way. I have got wet weather gear on, but I really don't want to get rained on. I'm not supposed to, it's supposed to be dry. Right, I just did a whole load of recording and um, I need to find that the microphone was not switched on on rec uh, screen record. Right, I'm looking through Photopills augmented night or night augmented reality mode and um, I'm at St Aldelm's Head. I'm hoping to photograph uh, time, uh, time lapse or a couple of time lapses from this position here with two different cameras, different focal lengths. And um, so I've programmed into Photo Pills uh, the Jamanid Meteor Shower, and this is showing that it'll be the radiant point will be coming up over the horizon over there um, at about eight, uh, quarter to seven, something like that. And then as the evening progresses, we've got seven o'clock. A uh, very faint Milky Way will pass behind the chapel as well, and then nine o'clock, ten o'clock. 11 o'clock, half 11, 12. So this, it should be a good place uh, from which to photograph it. Um, it's tricky because um, with wide angle, uh, what will happen is that um, the meteors will appear smaller and I'm shooting towards the radiant point um, of them. And so they'll be shorter as well. Uh, so I may set up one camera in this direction and then I may set up the other camera in the opposite direction um, looking back over this way behind me uh, towards where the sun is setting in the hope that there I may capture um, a few uh, longer meteors. And then in terms of when the peak is, let's get out of night mode. And um, the peak uh, of this meteor shower should be something like about, uh, what have we got there? What time is that saying? About half past midnight, something like that. Where, or even a bit sooner than that. So from about half 11 onwards, we're at something like around about 110 meteors per hour, which is uh, pretty good. So we should see a lot more tonight than there were yesterday, hopefully. Okay, I thought, what I might do is just, as I've got a lot of time to spare, um, oh, the reason I've got a lot of time to spare is basically because my uh, clear weather window has gone back about an hour and a half. This kind of happened a bit yesterday as well. So I've ended up, instead of having about an hour uh, of setup time, actually nearer to three hours of setup time and I'm still about an hour and a half away. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm just going to guide you through how I've set up this shoot. Right, we're going to call this camera A and this one is the uh, Nikon Z62, they're both Z62s and this one has the 15 millimeter, uh, excuse me, 15 millimeter lower lens on it and on this one I'm going to want to put the Nissi night filter on. As I say, I'm really impressed with the night filter. I do rather like that. Right, so that's just um, an adapter ring that I've put on there. 72mm um, adapter uh, that steps up to uh, this, which I think is 77 from memory. So this is just the holding ring for... That's it, it's taken. Uh, for the Nissi 100mm filter kit and then the filter holder just clips on the front there and then you can tighten it up. 
at the side. And then in here we have our Nissi night filter. Not sure whether these filters are resin or glass, but either way I don't want to risk scratching any coating. I think that's going to be clean enough. That's good. I've already cleaned the lens. Okay, so this is the main subject of our shoot. And uh, well, that and the sky behind it. And so over this way uh, to the left over there, let's just walk you across. In the distance, 20 meters away or so. Maybe a bit less, 15 meters, we have camera number one, or A, or B, I don't know, B. Anyway, it's the left-hand camera. And so the view from here uh, is of this aspect. So the door uh, over to the right there. And this buttress, ah, that's the word for it, this buttress here, I couldn't remember it earlier, uh, is sort of leading in from the bottom left corner. And this one is a 20 millimeter f1.8 uh, Nikon Z series lens. So for now, this is a static time lapse from here. So we're just set up on a standard tripod head with a leveling mount. And um, I've got no filters uh, at all on this particular camera. Uh, now I do have down here, because it's going to be quite a long shoot, I'm expecting to be here maybe till two in the morning, something like that. Um, I've got an additional power bank here because the, um, the Z6 Mark II can take an external power bank. Uh, so that, that obviously will help the batteries last, well I hope, pretty much all night. I also have down here, uh, in case of need, um, I've got a, um, a lens warmer, which we can also plug into this battery pack. Now, I am expecting humid conditions tonight. It's going to be, I think, something like 96%, 7% humidity. And so there's a reasonable likelihood that the, the lens might decide to, to mist up. But my experience with this lens is that um, uh, I don't want to put a heater on it unless I really have to because it's had a tendency in the past to fog on the inside to get condensation on the inside so I don't really want to do that unless I absolutely have to. So for now we're just going to have this external power bank here. We've got the lens heater uh, if we need it. Um, we'll do interval timer shooting so I don't need a remote shutter release for this. Once I've set it going it's just going to be going. So, relatively straightforward. Now, the, the left-hand lighting of this, um, right over here, about another 20 metres away, uh, is a, um, a variable power flat panel L, um, LED lamp. So I can change uh, the temperature of this lamp I think I've got it set to about 4,400 Kelvin, something like that. And I've got it down on its lowest setting of 1%. And so that should last for the entirety of the shoot once it's turned on. Obviously I'm not going to turn it on yet because I don't want to waste the power. And so from this perspective, if we turn around, oh, uh, we're some way away from the um, from the chapel, uh, but 1% lamp light from this distance with the ISO levels and length of shot that we're talking about uh, is enough. That's all it needs. It might even be a little bit too bright and I might have to turn it down a bit. We'll see. Um, I've already made a number of adjustments by walking it further away. Um, it's about twice as far away as it was, and I started on 2%. So 
So I've reduced the power and I've increased the distance. Right, so back past the chapel and we're to the second camera, which is taking a shot from the other side. And um, this one, pretty much the same setup, uh, with the exception that this one has the night filter on it. And so this changes the color temperature a bit, helps get rid of uh, light pollution and give us more natural light tones. Um, so, uh, so this one, uh, other than that, pretty much exactly the same. Again, I haven't put a lens warmer on as yet, but I do have the extended battery pack uh, in case of need. And then behind it, over here, so again, at an angle, relative angle, across the face of the chapel, we have another lamp, and this one's set up exactly the same as the other one, except that it is a bit nearer to it. So it's got the same power setting, uh, but because it's nearer, um, it should um, be a bit brighter on this side than on that side, and so that gives us uh, a little bit of relative difference in shading. Um, so that's it. Um, sort of took quite a long time to set all of that up, surprisingly. And because I'm going to be here a long time, the other essential uh, for this evening is this, which is my director's chair uh, for the night. So um, I've been sitting in this for the last hour or so, eating my tea and uh, watching a bit of Thomas Heaton on his trip to Spain. There you go. Okay, well, this is really, really frustrating. <laughs> so my weather window, uh, which originally was going to be from about, I think something like about 7.30, 7 o'clock. Um, no, it was earlier than that. It was about two and a half hours after, after sunset, which was about four, so it would be about half six. Um, that thing got kind of moved back to about eight, and I've just done another weather check, and it's not till after 11 o'clock. <laughs> so by which time I will have been here for seven hours. This, uh, this is astrophotography for you, unfortunately. So um, what I've done, rather than waste the night, uh, because I've no guarantee that the weather is going to clear then, um, it's just too unpredictable. So uh, I've set up a three hour time lapse uh, between now and 11 o'clock. Uh, well, no, until 11 o'clock, so that's the time now. It's about 8.30 I think, something like that. Uh, so I've set up a time lapse until uh, 11, uh, during which time we will get some nice skiddy clouds going by. Um, and some very moody uh, time lapse of this rather beautiful, uh, mysterious chapel on a headland on the south coast of the UK. Um, and I think that's probably all that I can promise you at the moment. Um, there might be the odd patch of starlight here and there. I'm pretty sure that um, the meteorites or the meteor yeah the meteorites that I was hoping that I was going to get to see are going to be very very sparse if at all uh, simply because of the amount of cloud cover which at the moment I would say is something like about 95 percent at least ah sad isn't it so after all of this setup and the travel and the many hours and Yesterday as well, this will have been two days or two nights really of um, just not getting there. But do you know, I think I'll have some nice shots anyway. I've got one or two nice shots at sunset, nothing to really write home about, but um, better than now. Uh, that's, uh, that's astrophotography for you, it happens a lot. So. I think I will probably end up being back here on another day. It's a shame about the Geminids, that would have been a particularly uh, good plan. Um, and everything else aligned, <laughs> except for the weather, 
the moon was right, uh, I had the time to do it, I got the equipment to do it on both cameras. Unfortunately, we just don't have the weather on our side. Well, sad to say, uh, the weather just got <laughs> worse and worse. <laughs> and, um, it's just got really, really windy. It's blowing over my lights. I had to stand and just physically hold one up for about three quarters of an hour before I finally decided I'm just going to call this one quits, I'm afraid. So, uh, this is probably be one of those projects that takes several years. A bit like my Milky Way shot at Great Staple Tour in Dartmoor. Four or five years it took of returning to that place to try and get the shot. And I think that's going to be the lesson um, of this particular uh, shoot or day trip or road trip is just even when it all goes pear-shaped belly up you've just got to persist and come back again again and again and then eventually one day one day we'll get it right. Anyway, if I get anything good out of this, uh, I will show it to you now. And in the meantime, thank you once again for watching. And I'll catch you again next time. Okay, it's future Nigel here, just breaking in uh, to this video because um, while I was editing, I just thought, do you know, I'm sure there's some images from this trip that I hadn't yet processed and, uh, and I hadn't yet made the time lapse from the camera on the left hand side of the setup. Uh, so I interrupted my uh, video creation and went back to Lightroom and decided to plow through them all. And I discovered amongst the 160 odd photographs in that sequence, uh, one of them with a meteor uh, right above the chapel, right up centre center frame, um, right above the cross on the top of the chapel. And uh, I can't tell you how delighted <laughs> I was to find that. Now, it's not a perfect shot of a meteor because it's partly obscured by the cloud cover. And there was, for a moment, there was a part of me that thought, maybe we could just clone in the bits that are missing. And um, irrespective of what you think about the rights and wrongs um, of cloning in photographs. Um, I decided in this particular instance, I wanted to show the photograph as it is because that was part of the story of the night. Uh, it didn't all go perfectly. Things, you know, the weather and the cloud cover were a problem. And for me, the story here is that despite that, I've still got an image out of it that I absolutely love and the fact that it's partly obscured that is part of the story so for what it's worth here's that image now <laughs>